I took advantage of things when I could and opportunities and places and people. I was not even in consideration for other dramatic roles maybe I wanted to do. Even for a major pay cut? No, nothing came in but romantic comedy. I wasn't sure if I was ever gonna go back and work in Hollywood again. It's never about memorizing the lines. It's understanding what the hell you're saying. So picture this. You're a struggling actor in your mid-twenties and by some incredible bit of chance. Bartender says, guy at the, the, the end of the uh, bars in town producing the film. So I go introduce myself. He goes, yeah, yeah, I'm working on this film producing and I'm casting. It's called Days Confused. What do you want? You have just landed what would come to be one of the most quotable coming of age characters ever brought to the big screen. You just gotta keep living, man. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> but at the time, no one knew it. While the masses wouldn't yet become accustomed to your on-screen presence, those within the industry would begin to take notice. And I said, hey, who, who's playing the lead role, Jake Brigance? He says, I don't know, who do you think should? I remember I was smoking at the time, and I remember <laughs> taking the cigarette at that point and taking a nice hit and going, I think I should. This awareness would lead to opportunities working with renowned directors like Joel Schumacher. We have a duty under God to seek the truth. Robert Zemeckis, and of course, the ever timeless Steven Spielberg. Because when you're in work mode with Steven, there's a, uh, get ready because you're about to do the next take. Around the late 90s, it became clear that Matthew McConaughey was not just a passing talent, rather an actor whose range would extend far enough to warrant roles alongside 90s megastars like Jodie Foster. Wait, are, are you a student? or something? Mm -hmm. I'm a writer, I'm writing a book. And Samuel L. Jackson. While these films were certainly successful, he wasn't necessarily the main draw. These were typically large ensemble casts with star power that overshadowed his own. Jody Foster, sign <laughs> To make matters more difficult, having a renowned director wouldn't necessarily guarantee box office success. I remember having some moments feeling like we may need to look into other careers. <laughs> what he needed was stability. What he needed was assurance that he'd continue to find work. What better way to do this than to play on Hollywood's most conventional standards? I'm just learning some things about my craft, learning some things about what, what how I can improve. A decent height, handsome appearance, and a charming on screen presence. You can make a great movie that if it's not marketed right or put out at the right time, it's gone. This decision would come towards the later end of the still booming rom-com golden era and in the form of 2001's The Wedding Planner. Wallflowers, it's time to blossom and bloom. McConaughey would co-star alongside one of the biggest pop stars of the late 90s and early 2000s. He said they were just friends. Deep down, I knew better. Despite poor critical reviews, I think we were coming up against a writer's strike and they needed me to say yes quickly to do the film. Audiences would see it differently. While their on-screen presence would certainly draw attention, Hi. It was their offset chemistry that would steal the show. Just yesterday we were in the middle of that field. You wow. said, Miss Lopez, I'm going to kiss you now. <laughs> Where fans would see a witty delivery and charming appearance, the industry would begin seeing dollar signs. Only two years later, he'd follow the same route alongside Kate Hudson with the rom-com classic, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. How long have you guys been seeing each other? Seven days. Seven days. Off of set, you had a very similar story. The main thing is that the the male and the female, or the two leads, have to have some chemistry. He is so down to earth. She's very easy to be attracted to. All of a sudden, out of the top of the boat pops Matthew. You ready, Hudson? And I was like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready, let's go. <laughs> McConaughey had found a stable safety net within the rom-com. I got paid extremely well. If he wasn't a household name by now, he was certainly becoming one. The undisputed king of romantic comedy with blockbusters like The Wedding Planner, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, and Failure to Launch, and he is likely to keep that streak going with ghosts of girlfriends past. He had successfully rode the rom-com wave to tremendous fame and wealth. Some good offers, some big offers. And had cultivated quite the following amongst female audiences. You get the talk trail, the yeah. gossip trail going for sure. Mm -hmm. But there was one major issue. While he certainly made fans out of a good portion of the general public, critics were often much less enthusiastic. When I received the romantic comedy script, I could look at it tonight and feel like, oh, I could do that tomorrow morning. There was rarely any critical praise for McConaughey's performances. I'm pretty much more my own referee, and I'm a harder referee on myself than anybody else. While they were certainly aware of the charm and charisma, they'd have much rather seen it applied to deeper, more complex performances. It's a bit of a reality 
reality check when something like that happens. You, know? right. you just kind of like go, oh, all right. Rom-coms had quite the predictable story structure. You introduce the two protagonists through an inciting incident, take the viewer through a series of romantic misadventures, then create a conflict that separates them, and in the end, they find their way back into a happy ending. Characters were often far more surface level. There was the clumsy but lovable lead and their skeptic sidekick best friend. Catchy. The guy's in advertising. There would usually be a too good to be true love interest. Most of the time I think I just wasn't enough. This predictability and formulaic approach to storytelling often made these films little more than comfort watches. Directors were too afraid to stray from what was a proven formula for broad appeal and commercial success. McConaughey, with enough time and repetitive roles, Hollywood and was saying, no, you stay in your zone, Matthew McConaughey, you're, you're a rom-com guy, would discover that the numbers on a check couldn't provide the fulfillment he needed as a creative. Um, I'd been so successful in the romantic comedies that the dramas I wanted to do were not being offered to me. If he was going to be taken seriously, he would need to shed the typecast that had proven to be a gold mine. So because I couldn't do what I wanted to do, I decided, well, let me stop doing what I've been doing. This would almost certainly lead to significant career instability. I think I am much more intentional than I think people perceive. After appearing in 2009's Ghost of Girlfriends Past, McConaughey would fully commit to a change in personal branding. And I didn't know how long that would last. I ended up going up with that work for 20 months. Opting for a two-year hiatus in an effort to distance himself from his previous image. I didn't want out. I just wanted in in a different way. After some patience, he'd make his resurgence as the slick, street-smart attorney Mick Haller in 2011's The Lincoln Lawyer. You got one chance to turn around and leave. This film was both a critical and commercial success, and while the character still carried his old charm, if you get your license back and whatnot, maybe, uh, you know, I could stay on and... I got my license back three months ago, Earl. He was far more emotionally complex. Surely a solid start, but not the impact he was hoping for. He'd follow this up with the critically acclaimed Mud in 2012. You never said your name. Mud. You can call me Mud. Yet still stood firmly on the radar as a rom-com actor. I hustled in both senses of the word. But then came a film that would not only test his emotional range, <laughs> but his physical limits as well. This would come in the form of the late Jean-Marc Vallée's Dallas Buyers Club. Can you prove these are patients? Can you prove they're not? Where McConaughey would drop down to 135 pounds to portray a chronically ill Ron Woodruff. Fans still can't believe that this shocking skeletal figure is the same Matthew McConaughey. Are you treating these people? Oh, they're treating themselves. With what? Vitamins, peptide T, DDC, anything but that poison you're hawking. Are you becoming a better actor? or are you taking roles that are better showing the skills that you already had? It's honestly, I think a bit of both. This performance would find him on the receiving end of unparalleled praise. It's a different level of commitment. Now, how long did it take for you to physically recover from something like that? Man, I'm still recovering. Really? <laughs> As I like to say, the ceiling's higher and the floor's lower. The Academy itself would fully agree. Dallas Buyers Club. Six Oscar nominations was no meager accomplishment, with McConaughey taking home the most coveted of all. Matthew McConaughey. To my wife Camilla and my kids, the courage and significance you give me every day I go out the door is unparalleled. You are the four people in my life that I want to make the most proud of me. This film had silenced even the loudest of critics, individuals who believed he couldn't possibly bounce back from the pretty boy typecast. Those were the dramas that I wanted, and boy, when they came, I just... But even better was the attention of some very respected directors. Name of the game? Move the money from your client's pocket into your pocket. Leonardo teed me up, but Martin Scorsese let me run. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. One of which being the ever-timeless Martin Scorsese and another monumental figure in Christopher Nolan. Matthew plays former astronaut turned farmer charged with saving the world. McConaughey had initially been put on Nolan's radar after his performance in Mud. A hell of a thing, ain't it? And would be cast as the lead in his new sci-fi adventure drama Interstellar. Plan A does not work if the people on Earth are dead by the time we pull it off. Once again, McConaughey's performance would pair in harmony with not only the cast, but Nolan's large-scale vision. Those possibilities are beyond anything that you could just dream up as a screenwriter. I've never worked with a better leader. Cannot say I've ever worked with a better problem solver. On the big screen, it seemed like McConaughey had been having quite the renaissance. I was looking to find work that made me sweat in my boots, challenged me, made me go, ooh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. But his talent wasn't limited to theaters. I know who I am. 
bit of a victory in that. The first season of HBO's True Detective had given McConaughey a chance to flex his skills within a much longer runtime. I loved Rusko. I loved how his mind worked. Death would be a deliverance for him. It'd also be a cop out. He was not a, not a man who was going to give himself amnesty. Even better was the chance to perform alongside longtime friend Woody Harrelson. As Rust Cole, he'd play a character who was both haunted and deeply philosophical. I just want you to stop saying odd. Sh you get any sleep last night? I don't sleep. I just dream. One that was a far cry from his earlier roles, and equally as acclaimed as any of the recent. It seemed McConaughey's transition had not only allowed him to work, but thrive. You were great in True Detective. You're real. You may well be the best actor, but you just won the Oscar like five months ago. It's no offense, but how many of those speeches of yours are we supposed to sit through? <laughs> His performances could now speak for themselves. McConaughey would grow more comfortable being vocal about his experiences. We're the minister of our own culture, and we ain't asking permission. Often speaking about the risks and challenges that came with creative pursuit. Be more in that moment, not anticipate. You go into a scene, you have 16 different ways to tell the truth. He couldn't do that before. I mean, he could, but who would take him seriously? He was just the guy who made rom-coms. He was just someone they needed to make a quick buck. Fast forward to today, and McConaughey now stands as one of the most powerful examples of an actor's potential for reinvention. You do look That's like you. me going through. Does anyone else's <laughs> name start with a m? <laughs> In an industry where creative risk is often met with failure, he'd weathered the storm to not only succeed, but carve out one of the most incredible filmographies of any actor in the last 20 years. That's not a television face, that's a movie star face right there. The risk he once carried seems to be a thing of the past. You're asking me to hang everything. An almost. He can stand alone and almost certainly be a draw, without the charm, without the crutch of a cliche, just as the man he simply always wanted to be. To any of us, whatever those things are, whatever it is we look up to, whatever it is we look forward to, and whoever it is we're chasing, to that I say amen. To that I say all right, all right, all right. <laughs> to that I say just keep living, huh? Thank you.